On September 24th, about a week and a half before the Invasion update dropped, Valve snuck in a handful of entities that weren't on the changelog. One of these entities was TF Generic Bomb. This entity was actually designed from the ground up to my own personal specifications for my map probed. The basic idea of this entity is to be a much more highly customizable pumpkin bomb. This entity allows you to customize the model it uses, the particles and sound it emits when it explodes, how much damage it does and the radius that it does that damage in, how much health it has, scaling, and more. This entity can even be blown up via input and can send outputs on explosion as well, which provides a ton of functionality. While talking with Valve about this entity, I tried to make it as generic and multi-use as possible. I will fully admit, I had a few ideas outside of Probed in mind for it. April Fool's ideas, you might say. So rather than try to cover every aspect of this entity here, I'm going to go over some of the basics of it, and then, for those interested in the finer details, I'll have a write-up on tf2maps.net about it in the description below. Starting off, we'll create the entity and play around with some of the settings. You'll see the familiar box you get when you place a basic prop entity. Let's change the model for it. We'll go with, uh, Metal Bucket. We'll also give it a name real quick. Bucket 1. Going down to the Explosion Damage and Radius, we'll set it to the Stock Pumpkin Bomb settings, which, according to Valve, is 150 damage and 300 radius. Now one thing to note is that the explosion comes out in straight lines from the origin point of the prop, so in the 3D view where the blue, green, and red lines all meet. Keep this in mind if you use a prop that is raised off the ground. And not only does the explosion damage come from this point, but also the particle effect. If you're using a custom prop, you can actually set an alternate point to change this. Check the TF2 Maps thread linked in the description for more on that. Next we'll set the particle to the default pumpkin bomb effect, which is pumpkin underscore explode. I included a few alternate explosions you can use in the TF2 map thread also, if you don't feel like digging and want to use something different. We'll next change it to the default pumpkin bomb sound, which can be found by browsing for pumpkin underscore explode with the raw sound type selected. You could also just search for explosion or explode and find your own. Giving it a quick compile, you can see how it looks in game. Kabam! It works. But you'll quickly notice that it never actually respawns, so I'm going to have to introduce a new entity to you to handle this, point underscore template. This entity allows us to force another entity or set of entities to spawn when it's called on. First we'll give it a name, Bucket Template 1. Keeping the number at the end is important for a later step that we're going to be covering. Now in the Template 1 field, we're going to enter the name of the generic bomb entity we created, so Bucket 1. This tells the template which we want to spawn. Now doing this also removes the chosen entity or entities from the game entirely when the round starts, so you have to force it once at the start of each round if you want it there at the beginning. So to do this, I'm going to simply create a logic auto, Go to the Outputs tab, and add a new output. On Multi New Round, then we'll put in Bucket Template Asterisk. Now the asterisk acts as a wildcard, so any other similarly named templates with any other numbers at the end of it will be targeted with this output. This saves us on creating an output for any other bombs we create, as long as we keep our name formatted the same. Last, the input will be Force Spawn. Now the bomb will spawn at the start of each new round. We also want the bomb to respawn after a set amount of time, so we'll go back to the bomb entity and in the outputs tab, add the output on detonate bucket template 1 with the input of force spawn. Now we can set the delay to how long we'd like to wait until we spawn the new bomb in its place. I'll go with 10 seconds. Another compile and you'll see that our bucket bomb is on the map and working fully, and also respawns after our 10 second delay that we set. So now you're probably thinking this sounds like a pain in the butt to set up for each bomb on our map. However, using the power of PACE SPECIAL, we can speed this process up dramatically. Select your bucket and the point template that goes with it. I like to make them in a neat little stack to help keep things organized. I'll also group them together while I have them here. Now hit Ctrl C to copy it. Right click on one of the 2D views and hit PACE SPECIAL. The dialog box it brings up gives you a few different options. First, I'll set this to paste 15 copies, leaving us 16 total. Then we'll make sure Start at Center of Original is checked, and we'll set the X offset to 32. This will paste a new bomb every 32 hammer units on the X axis. Now last and most importantly, check Make Pasted Entity Names Unique. This is where the magic will happen. Checking this will cause our logic to increment itself by one for every new bomb. This includes all outputs as well. Now hit OK. Now we have a row of 16 bucket bombs ready to throw around the map wherever we want with fully working respawn logic. So that is all. This entity is something I'm really, really excited to see what people do with, and I'm super stoked to have something that I custom tailored to my own needs available for everyone to play with. Let me know what creative uses you have for it. Pay special!